the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Remember, we put the and after the third uh, 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 thing that we're grouping together. So Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we put the and on the last one, not on each one. So it's the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And then he's called um, Ha'el Hagadol, so the God who is the Great One, the Mighty One, and the Awesome One. He's Elion, the Most High uh, God. So these are all terms from the Torah describing him. Gomel Chasidim Tovim, Bekoneh Hakol. We said Gomel means to bestow blessings from the root Gamal, where we get the letter Gimel. Gimel, which is a picture of a camel, is what you loaded up the blessings on. So the more camels you had, the more blessings you had. Gomel Chasidim, um, from the word Chesed, mercy or loving kindness. Chasidim is not only um, uh, uh, mercies or loving kindnesses in the plural, but it's also uh, in reference to the Hasidic Jew who are called themselves the Hasidim, which means that they are the merciful ones or the ones that believe in, in, in fulfilling God's loving kindness that the patriarchs fulfilled. So it says he, he bestows literally uh, loving kindnesses that are good. Uh, so, chasadim tovim, the word tov, meaning good, is tovim, plural, and he, he literally owns everything, some versions will say he creates all, but literally it means he possesses all, he's the possessor of heaven and earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, okay? So, uh, we left off, I believe, with bezocher chasdei avot, uh, did we go any further than that? which is that he remembers the mercies or loving kindnesses or the acts of loving kindnesses of our Father. Okay? So did we go any further than that on last week? I believe we stopped there. Does anybody remember anything further than that? Okay. So let's pick up what we left off on our dot, dot, dot here. But let's pick up in Hebrew. So here we have the idea... Um, you, would you like to review first what you learned the last time? Yes. Okay. Okay, so what's our first, let's do line by line so we, that we can kind of refresh our mind, remember. Normally on Baruch, we bend the knee because Baruch, knee, is of the same root as to bless, to bend the knee to God. So we bend the knee at Baruch, bow down at Atah, come up at Adonai. So usually it's this kind of a gesture. Um, again, it's tradition, but it's a great tradition wrapped around the meaning or root of the words. The idea that when you submit to God's will, you are blessing Him and He will bless you. It will actually be a part of our message today when we learn about the kingdom, where He said, uh, Yeshua taught us to pray, Thy kingdom come, meaning it's not here yet, but Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, the kingdom comes as your will, His will is done. In you. So the, the kingdom is coming. It's not so much established yet and finished, it is coming. His kingdom, his rule, his reign, his authority is established in the earth as we do the will of God, what he asked us to do. Fulfill his covenant, keep his commands. We are fulfill, fulfilling or establishing his rule and reign, his kingdom in our life. If we disobey uh, God's commands and break his covenant, we are saying, God, I don't want your kingdom. I don't want your authority. I don't want your sovereignty over my life. You are not Melech Alam. You are not king of the universe. You are not king over the, over the world or over eternity. You are not in control of my life. So this gesture is just saying we submit to that authority. We bow before a king. Amen? And so we have Baruch, Ata, Adonai, then we have Eloheinu, and then to the Melech Alam we have Belohe Avotinu. Okay? So... This is the melody that usually is done for Shabbat and festivals. There's a different melody usually for during the week that's more straightforward. Okay? So let's see if we can remember it together, right? <laughs> Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Velohe Avoteinu Elohe Abraham Elohe Yisab Elohe Yeah. 
Livne. This is actually from Ben. Bene, Yisrael, the sons of Israel. This is Livne. So we lose the, the Dagesh here to make it a B sound, the Dagesh, and then it becomes Livne instead of Bene. It's Livne, which is for, and this is literally sons of, okay? Um, so he brings a redeemer for the sons. Watch this. Then we have the letter Vav again. And we have another form of the word Ben. Oh, actually, no, we don't have a Vav. We have just the letter Vait. Here's the letters for son. But now we have Benahim, which actually means their sons. Remember how we have the pronoun, pronoun singular masculine, who, who is he, and feminine singular, he is she. If we go plural, who becomes him, they, and hen is they feminine. So we have they masculine, him, and then we have hen. In this case, this suffix ending Hem is actually referring to them, so their sons. In other words, for the sons of their sons, meaning their children's children, their sons' sons. Literally, two generations are mentioned here. For the sons of their sons. We would say your grandkids, right? For the sons of your sons, okay? So we have Livne Venehem. Okay, so we have Umevi Goel Livne Venehem. Say that with me. Umevi Goel Livne Venehem. Okay, remember when the Dagesh is not in the center of the letter B, it becomes a V sound. Okay, and the Lamin in front of Bene is two is the the prefix we use for two or four, right? So we have Umevi Goel Livne Venehem. Okay. They translated um, a redeemer and well, literally this is a, wood, a very woody translation. A redeemer and brings the father's kindness. Well, actually, I'm reading backwards. Uh, uh, and brings a redeemer to children's children. And now the next part for his namesake, we will have a very famous word in Hebrew that gets that shows up a lot in blessings. Literally, for the sake of Lema'an. Okay, so this word means for the sake of Lema'an, the Lamed for four, and Ma'an for the sake of. And then we have Shmo. And we know Shem is name, right? Mm -hmm. So Shmo means what? Just Not Joe Shmo. Just the O, the Vav uh, uses an O at the end of this, the root letters for Shem is the suffix for his. So his name. Okay, Shmo. Okay, so for the sake of his name, Lema'an Shmo, and now we have in love. So we have the letter Beit, and we have Ahava. So Aleph, Hey, the letter Beit or Beit. And another hey. And we have the word love, ahava. I would say if I'm conjugating um, the root, ahav, I would conjugate it for myself, ani ohev. Right? Ani ohevet otach, or um, otcha, for a man, otcha, for a woman, otach. So how do I say I love you to my wife? Ani ohev otach. Okay? Um, a woman would say to her husband, Ani ohebet otcha. Okay, it's taking the Aleph Tav 
or we know as at, into uh, uh, a form for uh, with the suffix ending your or um, here we have otcha, a cha ending for a man and otach for a woman. Okay, so this is masculine, this is feminine. So I would say ani ohev. Okay, so, ohev is the same root as ahava. Um, I would put a, um, a vav in here to make the a ah sound an o, or the aleph an o, because actually aleph doesn't have a sound by itself. And then I would have these root letters, aleph, hey, vav, and it would look like this. Aleph, vav, and the dot on top of the o. And, um, let me see. Yeah. Okay, so here we have Ani, Ohev, and then we'll do the Aleph Tav. Otach. Ani Ohev Otach. Okay? I love you. Okay? In this case, this is the noun of love. Ahava. It's like we say, I'm standing, or I say, I'm standing, ani omed, but it's amida for the name of prayer, right? Amida, ahava, right? Um, and we can do that with all these verbs. They have a noun form of it. Um, think of another, what's another Hebrew word we use a lot? Hebrew noun. Um, well, hagada, tefillah, tehillah. All of these sounds, you hear the ah sound at the end, that ah kind of bursts it as a thing. The female is the one that bursts it as a reality, just like the woman births a child. So the ah sound at the end of the root letters gives it the grounding or birth as an, a substance, an actual thing. So instead of saying, I love you as a verb, I'm telling you, um, you should have love, the noun love, the substance love, the thing love. What is love? Well, love is a you know, is an expression or an action, right? That is birthed through, you know, following through some type of action of love or doing something that shows love. But I can say I love you all day long, but if I'm not until I, it's birthed in the earth and I actually do something to show I love you, it's all just words, right? It can't just be thought and words, it needs to be deeds in, in, in Jewish thought, right? So here we have... Try that with me. Umevi go el divne benehem. Try that again. Umevi go el divne benehem. One more time, make it make it a, a habit. Umevi go el divne benehem. Next line. Leman shemo be'ahava, leman shemo be'ahava, leman shemo be'ahava. Okay. So so far we have Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Elohe Aboteinu Elohe Abraham Elohe Isaac Elohe Yaakov. Melek is what? Man. King. Okay. And now we have Ozer. And then we have the and again. This in this time it's also the U sound. And we have the word for savior, Moshia. This is the official word for Savior, the same root as Yeshua. Moshiach is the noun Savior. It's the actual
actual way to say Savior. Because basically Yeshua means Yah saves, which is the concept of a Savior, but this is the actual noun, Moshia. Okay? Moshia. And what else do we have here? Almost done, guys. Um, again. Okay, now we have the ending.